Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Reese. Um, I know we have a uh, kind of pseudo snow day type of situation right now. Um, so what we're going to do is that I'm going to make this video just kind of explaining uh, the assignment for today um, along with a couple of other things. So again, we will still be having our tests on Friday, but um, we're going to kind of like take off some of the stuff that uh, we usually would have on this test. So anyway, we're going to be talking about the Reformation and the Northern Renaissance now, specifically with Martin Luther. Now, when it comes to this, there is also this that is on this assignment. All right. So talking about Martin Luther and problems with the church. Okay. So when it comes to this, I'm going to go through this presentation. I'll stop every once in a while to kind of help you answer the things that you need to answer on here. Okay. So with that being said, what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to click through this. And I'm going to like actually talk about. It. So just pay attention, and then I'll tell you when uh, we're going to start typing some stuff. All right. So again, this is the Reformation. Now, as we know, the Renaissance has this idea of humanistic thinking that emphasizes the idea of religious thinking that is not very religious. So we're going from away from the religion to non-religious thinking, thinking more about humans. All right. Hence the term humanistic thinking. Okay. So there is that. Now, this does have an effect on the Northern Renaissance as well, um, specifically with a dude by the name of Desiderius Rasmus. Now, he thinks of something that he kind of combines Christianity and humanism, and he just, like, meshes them together. All right, this is where we get the idea of Christian humanism. All right, so this is Desiderius Rasmus. He basically says there's three things that you need to do uh, to be a humanist that is also Christian. First thing is that you got to live good lives on the daily basis, all right? So just be a good person like I know all of you all are, all right? On top of that, um, we also have uh, the church to return to simpler days. And what he means by that is the time where, you know, you're just preaching the word of God and you were uh, kind of talking about the Bible. Okay, none of this other stuff that uh, we see the church doing right now. Um, and then on top of that, we also have the idea of education, where you need to educate yourself in not only religion, but other things as well. Okay, so those are the three main things that we see with Desiderius Rasmus. Now, we do get some Christian reform for the um, Catholic, or not the Catholic Church, but, uh, well, really the Catholic Church. So um, the one thing that we're going to be talking about is something called the economics of salvation. So as we know, salvation is the idea of being saved through faith and faith alone. All right. Now, economics. So we, we're dealing with the money part as well as, you know, the saving part. Okay. And this is where we get the idea of indulgences. Now, you may ask, what are indulgences? This is what it looks like. So basically, it's a slip of paper that someone would pay for over time along with a bunch of other uh, pieces of paper that are indulgences that basically say, you know, you, you paid your way to get into heaven. It's basically a pay to win type of situation like you see in a lot of video games today. But it's a pay to win to get into heaven. Now, when you die, um, your family is going to sit there and give all the indulgences that you have ever bought in whenever you were um, alive. And so when you're in purgatory... You know the they're going to get these pa the pieces of paper, and then the um, bishop's going to say, "Hey, he's good." But basically, stamp your way into heaven. Okay, so basically, it's a get out of hell free card, which is uh, let's just say not a not the most uh, um, ideal thing to say the least. Uh, all right, a lot of people didn't like it because it basically just favored the rich, um, and yeah. So anyway, um, I'm going to go back here now. All right, so one of the biggest things that we get is down here where it says problems in the church because the big thing is that we get the selling of indulgences, okay? Uh, that's one of the biggest uh, things with it. Um, on top of that, we get some corruption as well, okay? Corruption as well. So those are some of the problems with the church. Now let's keep moving on through this. All right, Martin Luther um, comes along, and Martin Luther is a Catholic monk and professor. All right, he believed that there is one thing that uh, he's going to do with his life. He's going to find out the true answer of, like, what, how do I get into heaven? Okay, so he did a lot of research, extensive research in the Bible and other biblical texts, 
and he ends up um, finding out that, you know, you can only be saved with faith in God and faith in God alone. None of this indulgence stuff, none of this stuff that says, hey, you know, I can buy my way into heaven. Okay. So when it comes to this, this leads us to um, key ideas. All right. So if you click on your key ideas part, you can type that um, salvation is through faith in God alone. All right. And that is it. Okay. So we have that. Okay. I'll give you a second to look at that. All right. Moving on. So we have this nice little picture right here. Now I blew it up a little bit so that we can see a little bit better. Um, just to give you kind of an idea of what this is all about. This is Martin Luther that's uh, pointing towards Jesus. Um, this is kind of symbolic of heaven and people being saved, you know, taking uh, the bread and the wine on uh, the Catholic Church. All right. This is uh, flames, all right, being engulfed by a bunch of people that are corrupt. Okay, so this is definitely hell. Um, and then finally, we have the people that are kind of in purgatory, kind of just begging to get into heaven because, you know, they bought all these indulgences. And so Martin Luther basically, ah, there you go. Martin Luther basically says, like, you guys are burning in hell because you guys didn't live good lives. You didn't have faith in God alone. Okay. Um, these people are trying to get back into heaven. All right. That are in purgatory. Um, and he's basically saying, like, you need to have faith in God and God alone. All right. So that's a little bit of this image that we see here. Now, uh, when it comes to Martin Luther's 95 theses, all right. I talked about the idea of the um, printing press, okay? Um, the printing press is going to play a little bit of a role in this. But basically what he did is that he wrote 95 um, grievances with the Catholic Church. He literally took those grievances, printed them out, and then went around Germany and literally nailed it to their front doors. So when people were going to Mass or to church, they saw this. And, th and since they're able to read now because the printing press caused such an uproar, okay, such an uproar um, with people's literacy rates, they are actually able to uh, to read this. And so, you know, they start thinking, hey, there's some, there's some corruptness that we see in the Catholic Church. Um, so Martin Luther actually sits there and uh, it starts this little bit of a movement, all right, and the Catholic Church is not going to really like that. So this leads us to uh, this aspect of this. All right, now I'm not going to sit here and tell you, um, type this out for you, but when it comes to this, if you click right here where it says 95 theses, this is actually the primary source that we see. Okay, all I want you to do is to kind of skim through this. I know there's 95, so I'm not going to sit there and, and make you read all of it. Um, I haven't even read all of it. Um, but what I want you to do is that I want you to find a couple that just kind of stand out to you. Okay, just a couple that stand out to you. I want you to put those right here. Okay, so I'll give you a second to pause the video. All right, um, see you in five seconds. All right, so you should have that down right here. Okay, so moving further, we have this idea of Martin Luther nailing these 95 Theses to church walls. Now, the Catholic Church is not going to sit there and be, you know, super excited about this. All right. Um, one thing that he keeps saying over and over again through these Catholic churches and through going through Germany is as soon as the coin hits the coffer or in the coffer, the money box rings, the soul from purgatory springs. All right. Basically saying, you know, you, you have to pay to get into heaven according to the Catholic Church. All right. So he ends up breaking from the Catholic Church. Okay. He ends up um, sitting there and he um, ends up sitting there and uh, basically saying that, you know, I'm going to go away from the Catholic Church here and I want to start creating my uh, own little thing. All right. He did keep two Catholic teachings, however, the idea of baptism and Eucharist, which is the idea of communion. OK, so when it comes to this. All right. Those are the two things that he keeps now. Um, Emperor Charles V of Germany, he ends up um, getting this thing called the Edict of the Worms. It's a source 
where he basically says Martin Luther is exiled and excommunicated from the church and is no longer, you know, a Christian in their eyes. Now, uh, Martin Luther is going to sit there and be like, well, I'm going to create my own sect. Uh, this is where we get a schism, all right, or a split in Christianity. And he gets this idea of Lutheranism, all right, or Protestants, okay? And the one thing he preaches in his new church and his new sect of Christianity is that salvation is the only way that you're going to get into heaven. Or, I mean, faith in God is the only way that you're going to get saved and you're going to go through salvation. All right. So that is a little bit about the Protestant Reformation and Martin Luther. Now, there's one last box that we have not filled out yet. Effects on Europe. So the one thing that I'll say is the effect on Europe that's most striking and the thing that's going that you're going to have to know about and be able to... Uh, you know, be able to have again and and, re and give me that information again, is that it caused other people to create Christian schisms, all right? Or splits, as I already said, okay? This will include people like John Calvin and Henry VIII. We'll talk about that in a little bit, all right, or tomorrow if we're in school tomorrow. So that is that. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to email me. Um, also, have like a, like actually have a day off, okay? Um, so that is that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Bye.